start. I've been involved in athletics my entire life. Uh, I played women's lacrosse in college and continue to try to play now as an adult. Uh, and I worked in college athletics for 10 years as an assistant athletic director for student athlete support. So I have worked with college coaches um, and student athletes who really are playing at, at almost the highest level. Um, also, I think my biggest claim to fame, and maybe you haven't heard of them yet, but I coach the Tantrums an undefeated under six co-ed soccer team in Seattle, Washington. Uh, we, we may or may not keep score, but we are undefeated, um, which is you know, awesome. So um, first thing we're gonna do today, I, again, I'm so glad you're here at the workshop. Pull out your phones. Um, usually I tell people to put them away, but pull them out. Um, as you see on the slide here, I'd love you to sign in. So text to this number, 650-763. 2405 and you're going to put in three things um first pound sign and then this this number one two three four five that's our session number today so make sure that one's right um and then your first name and last name and then your email address um what this is going to do is make sure that a you get credit for being here right you've all put in the time and we're glad that your organization brought this to you so let's get you credit for being here you'll receive an email by tomorrow that has a certificate uh, that you've been through a double goal coach session, which is awesome. And then you're going to get six emails in the next six weeks with talking points uh, from PCA so that you can keep this going. You know, one thing I know about sessions that are one time is that sometimes we come, we learn, and then we sort of forget about them. So it's really helpful to get those extra emails um, and then access to our PCA Development Zone website, which I'll talk more about later. So is everybody in? Let me see. You'll get a confirmation to your, to your text. I think you are all in. Great. Yep. I see Kylie. I see Kelly. Perfect. All right. Let's move right along. Um, this is a double, double goal coach session. So coaching for winning and life lessons. Um, and so I, I want to know if, who's in the room. How many have heard of PCA before or been to a workshop? Anyone? I was at one oh, once. Right. Oh, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this is familiar to you. So that's exciting. Uh, for me to know that I'm going to have a lot of folks who will volunteer and participate, but I hope we hear from all of you because there's a wealth of knowledge in the room. Um, I'd like to know though who you are. So stand up for me if you would. Um, and if this is your, you don't have to, really, um, if this is your first season coaching, give me a little wave and then take a seat. Um, if you've been coaching for two to five years, now you all sit down. Great. Uh, six to 10. Wow. And anyone for more than 10 years? Wow. Awesome. Um, this is great. Uh, and then I want to know who you, who you coach. You know, like I said, I coach the little ones. So raise your hand if you coach students or kids uh, who are maybe nine or, or younger. And that's my group. Um, what about the tweens, 10 through 13-ish? Ah. And high schoolers? Anyone coach old ladies like me? No? All right. <laughs> well, good. This is great. I love working with youth coaches, and this is such an exciting group um, to work with. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about who PCA is. Um, PCA was founded about 20 years ago at Stanford University um, and put on these great workshops and have awesome online resources for coaches like you to really um, learn as much as they can and put the work into practice on your teams. Um, they've trained over 80,000 coaches, and let's just keep adding that on um, to the list. So it's an awesome environment and glad the great people who are involved with it. Uh, what does it mean to you when you hear the phrase positive coaching? Everyone uh, gets for me, it ribbon. just, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say everyone gets a ribbon. <laughs> everyone gets a ribbon. You know, my daughter's been playing for two years, uh, several sports, and I'm, I'm proud to say she hasn't gotten a trophy or a ribbon yet. <laughs> so good one, but I don't know that that's exactly it. What else do you hear? She must not be a swimmer because I have 50,000 ribbons from my daughter who's 10. Every time she does a race, she gets a ribbon for something. Yep. So yep. I hear you, Kylie. Um, I think positive coaching is a coach that's just out there enjoying themselves and having fun and being really supportive of the kids and, um, you know, just, just really cares about their kids and, and likes what they're doing. Awesome. Anyone else? Ruben? Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you okay. hear me? Um, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I got a message that my mic wasn't working, but it evidently it is. Um, yeah, I think of it as, you know, um, setting a good example for everybody, uh, being a good role model. Um, Great. You know, for how to conduct yourself out there in youth sports. 
Awesome. Those are great examples. And I definitely, Kylie, I, lo I love yours because I think right now that is what we've heard. You know, everyone gets a trophy for everything. And is that what I'm talking about here today with PCA? And, and the answer really is, is no. We care about winning just like you care about winning. And you raise your hand if you're super competitive, right? I, I'm raising both hands. I am, I'm really competitive. Uh, and we absolutely want to make sure that our students are getting better and are putting out really incredible athletes. The motto of PCA is really better athletes, better people. Uh, and I think they do it in order like that because it's really important. That is what sports are all about and, and being competitive. Um, so what does this phrase mean to you? Creating an atmosphere that supports best possible performance. What, do you, what does that mean to you? It means coaching in a way that gives us the best chance to perform well and win games. Awesome. Great, great. When I think of an atmosphere, I think it's just not how I coach them. It's the other people, the other kids around them on the team, too. Like, that's what I think of when I think of an atmosphere. Great. Yeah, culture. You know, we talk about culture is sort of the, the way we do things here. And I think if you really set a culture in your organization, on your team, that it's going to be a positive experience from, from the start uh, with parents, with your, your players on day one. Um, all of those things will really bring an atmosphere that helps kids enjoy their experience, which is what it's all about. Um, uh, but what about, have you ever thought of a time, um, can you remember a time when you've had a not so positive experience with a coach or maybe a teacher? It may not have been a coach, but maybe you've made a, a big mistake. You're at the free throw line uh, and time is ticking down and it's an important shot and, and you missed it or something. Um, can you think of a time when someone reacted not so positively in a negative way? Take a minute just to think about that. Mm -hmm. Does something come to mind right away? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I won't make you share. I'm not going to make you share, but mm -hmm. I know I have that moment that just sticks out in my head of eighth grade basketball and knowing I will not forget that moment. Uh, and I didn't like the way I felt. And I've also felt it at, at work in, in the past, you know, um, depending on who you have as a supervisor or boss or the culture or team you're on, there's days you go, ugh, is this exactly, uh, am I motivated to do this? And then I've been a part of a team and culture at work and on teams that have felt awesome. And when you feel awesome, you're more motivated, you're ready to put in the effort that you really need to get better and, and ultimately to win. Um, uh, you can push this slide forward, Kelly, if you want. Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. Um, so where PCA is coming from is really taking what we're learning in sports psychology. So you'll see a lot of research um, and also really great best practices from coaches. So Dr. Barbara Fredrickson is at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Um, she's a member of the PCA National Advisory Board. Um, here's what she says. She says, there's a perception that the best way to get what you want out of employees or players is by negativity or threats. But negativity doesn't work as well as positivity. Uh, would someone volunteer to read the next sentence for me? Maybe Kelly, because it's right in front of you. Sure, yep. <laughs> positive <laughs> emotions are especially contagious, and a leader's positive emotions are more contagious than anyone else's. Yeah, have you experienced that a bit, that when you have an awesome, just powerful coach or boss, it just makes everyone around them a little better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Um, I think we know a lot from research, but that doesn't always get out into mainstream media. And so I love this example from Sports Illustrated. I think more and more we're hearing and seeing examples of sometimes the what not to do's. I think that um, especially really aggressive and bullying coaches have been put out in the news and that's just, that's the past. I think we're moving forward from that. And really the, the coaching future is, is in the positive. You'll see on this cover page, the last days of the abusive coach, right? Study after study shows the benefits of a more positive approach. So I think it's getting more mainstream and people are hearing it, which makes the culture and the environment and youth sports better. But it's, we still see a lot of bad examples and tough examples. <laughs> Um, and it's not just people like me who are coaching the little ones, um, but we have really, there's some great elite coaches and athletes who have bought in completely and are members of the National PCA Board, uh, Advisory Board, and um, they're volunteering their time and putting their face to this amazing organization, really to say that this is what they want out of sports too. So I think you'll recognize a lot of the faces and names up here, and this is just a small sample of who are members and uh, are behind PCA at this point. Um, uh, let's talk another second just about negativity and, and what it does to us. Uh, I think that, you know, everybody says in coaching, you know, what's the most important play? 
the next play, right? So whether you're, you're playing awesome uh, or you just got scored on, uh, the most important thing is what happens next. So negativity can be really distracting. We know that in research and we know that in practice, right? We, we thought about an example of when there was a negative phrase maybe used to us, or maybe we heard a parent in this the crowd yell out something that was really negative. It throws us off our game. It distracts you from what you're doing. Um, so we know that uh, from the research, but I think we also know that from personal experience and we see it. I think, uh, I know I've seen kids out there playing really well and then you hear something and you just see them rattled. Has anyone seen that before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. uh, it happens too often. So we know that, that um, it distracts us, right? So if you agree with that, just give me a little head nod, wave. And you agree that positivity works better? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay, my work here is done. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> why do we still have so many examples of negativity in sports? Why, why is it there? Um, turn to a partner maybe and talk about it just for a minute. Um, and I'll pull you back. Okay, give me some examples. Why do you think it's there? Everybody, Everybody wants, wants to win, win and, and uh, somebody's going to lose, lose every day. Every day. So. Yeah. It's, it can be frustrating. You want to win. Sure. Winning is important. And maybe that's the one way people think we can get there. I think a, a lot of negativity comes from the parents and the parents think that their kids success in sports is the solution to their child's every problem. I mean, every, wow. you know, everything in life is based around how successful they are in sports, their confidence, their, you know, success in life. And so I think they just put so much pressure on their kids to perform um, so I think a lot of the negativity, anyway, at the age that I coach more negativity, much more negativity comes from the parents than it does from yeah, me, and, hopefully. And perhaps that is exactly how they were coached when they were playing and growing up. You know, it, it's something that kind of, it wasn't the good old days, but when they think back to how they were coached, that might've been what it was like. Um, Kylie, anything from you? I would say about parents. I mean, from, that's a big thing that I've seen. Um, even from own personal um, background is I had that um, when I was younger. So I, I know it still exists and is, is a problem. Yeah, uh, th- those were great. I, I appreciate all your comments. I think that pressure to win, I think more and more, uh, it's expensive to play youth sports now. It was not expensive when I was a kid. And, and now, I mean, people are playing soccer in Seattle. Soccer is huge. And people are playing soccer year round and, and spending tens of thousands of dollars to, to travel or just to play even locally. And, and that's just a little bit out, outrageous and adds a different kind of pressure, uh, both to the kids and the parents and the coaches. So I, I agree with all of those comments. Thank you. Uh, so again, PCA's vision really is to use sports psychology and then also best practices from coaches. Like I said, a lot of that uh, is in the room. And so I will have you break up and talk amongst yourselves several times today. Um, And I want to use the motto to help bring you back because I did not bring my whistle today. Um, (laughs) Sometimes I do. I'm used to talking to a group of college students and I know when I say talk amongst yourselves, it's hard to get everyone back. So um, when I do have you talk amongst yourself, I am going to then call you back by saying better athletes. And I want you to call back better people. Okay, so let's just try it right now for fun. Uh, Better athletes. Better Better people. people. Better people. Awesome, awesome. You get a thumbs up. Um, Well done. Okay, so um, before we break you up, I just want to talk about a couple resources. You all will be going home with this book. I think you picked them up at the door. Uh, This is a really awesome guide. And like I said, I um, I got little kids. I read a lot of Dr. Seuss, but this was an easy (laughs) So you can absolutely do this. Um, I have faith in you. Um, And it's just a great place to go. And there's really good tips for all levels and ages in this book. So please use it. We'll use it a bit during the presentation. Um, Like I said, you'll be getting emails. So you'll get a talking points email once a week for the next six weeks. Um, And then where I think is actually the best resources online, there are um, tons and tons of articles about different hot topics, right? So whether that's recruiting, uh, working with parents, um, a big one for me, coaching your own kid, right? That can be really tricky. My first year coaching, I absolutely loved coaching the four and five-year-olds, loved it. But my daughter was so challenging at practice. Uh, it was, it was the hardest thing for me to do that. I I really was not sure I was going to do it again, but I'm so glad I did. She was much better at age five. So, uh, (laughs) that that was helpful, but the, the, um, amount of resources for you that are on PCA dev zone are incredible and you should absolutely go there. 
Um, so I, I'm going to try this now. Okay, remember, I'm going to let you talk amongst yourselves, but I'm going to call you back with better people, and you're going to say better athletes, okay? So turn to a partner, a neighbor, um, and just talk quickly about what makes a great youth sports experience for kids. Just for sake of maybe you can, oh, good job. Good job. Maybe say a couple things. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Did anyone, did anyone think about making friendships or strong bonds with teammates? Yeah. yeah. That connection mm -hmm. is so important. Um, I think whether you are a little kid playing a, for, a sport for the first time, or you're somebody who's uh, in uh, like me, who's, who's playing lacrosse as a 38 year old woman, I, I still do it for the friendships. Uh, of course I'm competitive and want to win. Uh, but, but for sure the connection is the number one reason why I've always continued to play. Believing you can improve, whether you're somebody who thinks you can be LeBron James, great, or you just want to get a little better every day. Uh, that improvement piece is so important, um, especially for young kids and, and up through motivating. I know for the Division One athletes, I recruited, they come in thinking they're the top dog. But really what we say to them is make sure you want to get better these next four years. This is not about you just maintaining your, your talent. Um, it's all about getting better and better. And then finally, um, feeling really proud uh, about acting with integrity and honoring the game and your sports. So those three things are really important. I hope they came up in your conversations. Uh, if that happens, what might, what might happen? If those three things really come together, what happens for those athletes? They play better. They play better. Yeah, good one. I think they'll come back next season. Absolutely. That's one of the best ways to know that uh, you've done a good job as a coach and that the culture is great is if, you're, if your team comes back. That's awesome. Any other ones? They'll enjoy it more. Absolutely. They're going to have fun. And if they're having fun, you know who's happy? The parents are happy. <laughs> your coaching staff's a little happier, mm -hmm. right? All that money you're spending on youth soccer feels a little bit better when they're having a good time, making friends, um, being connected, and also feeling like they're getting a little bit better every day. Um, it, it's, it's so important. So great. Thank you. Um, so we'll talk today, when we go on to the workshop, there's three different components um, of, the, of the coaching model through PCA. One is, is that connectedness. And we're going to talk about filling an emotional tank. Uh, in my daughter's classroom, she's in kindergarten, she calls it a bucket, um, and filling the bucket. And then, of course, I always mess it up and say, did you fill my tank today? And she says, no, Mom, it's a bucket. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you, I think it's a tank. Uh, so we'll talk more about that later. Um, improving really is, is the elm tree of mastery is something that we'll talk about. Um, talking about effort, how much effort everyone is putting towards it, really putting in the work. Um, learning, right? Learning, being coachable. And then mistakes, right? Not only are mistakes okay, but they're necessary uh, to get better. You're not going to learn unless you make them, right? They're not fun to make all the time, but we really want to embrace that. Making mistakes um, is a really important part of getting better. And then integrity, honoring the game. We'll talk about um, roots, respecting uh, rules, officials, um, our opponents, teammates, and yourself. So that's what we will get into a bit later. Before we do that, I want to share a video um, from Coach Herm Edwards, who now is, it says former coach on here, but will be the Arizona State's coach in football. <laughs> so we'll see how he does. I think uh, certainly as a speaker, I, I can see him being a great role model for college student athletes. So we'll play that. Okay. And then open up your book, uh, just to the first front cover. And what I'd like you to do uh, is put a couple things in here, right? When the book of your life is written, what will it say? Will it say that you made a difference? You just write in here what you hope your players will say about you as a coach. Just write a couple things down, three or four things. Great. I think that, A, I want you to use this book. B, I want you to remember why you're using this book. Um, I think it's so important really to leave a legacy. Just remember your impact is so great. Uh, and these kids will remember you. They might not remember exactly how you taught them to, uh, uh, to shoot a free throw or to, um, for me, uh, well, I've learned a lot from my coaches, but I can't remember what exactly I learned from them except for how they made me feel uh, and that they pushed me to be my best. So, uh, those are some of the things that are important to me. Um, how would you share with a quick share with a partner? 
Okay, better athletes? Better people. Better people. Awesome, okay, great job. Uh, we talked about double goal coach. So I'm gonna reiterate, we wanna strive to win. That is one of the absolute most critical things. And also teach life lessons. A lot of times we talk about a win at all cost um, sort of mentality there in cultures, which is not, it's not good. Um, and so we want to make sure that you're really um, learning a lot through sport. We know that it happens sometimes naturally, but also it can help um, when coaches really facilitate it. So what are some ways that life lessons that can be learned through athletics? Shout them out. Teamwork. 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 Sportsmanship. Cooperation. Great. Work, work ethic. Goal work. setting. Awesome. Resil resiliency. Mm -hmm. Time management. Awesome. One more. Winning gracefully. Push, pushing through when you're pooped. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> you are so good. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, those are all so important. <laughs> They're so important. Um, I, I recently, um, I think one of the best examples of that, um, doing both at once might be the story. If you're a college basketball fan, like I am, you may have uh, read the story about the Iowa player, um, Jordan Bohannon, I think his name is. Um, he has had 34 consecutive free throws in a row that he would made. He was tied for the record of Iowa history, uh, but the person he was tied with, um, Chris street was a, a phenom phenomenal player. Um, but unfortunately he died in a car accident. Um, and, and that was where his, uh, kind of, the streak stopped. Um, so Jordan knew that he knew that and he wanted to honor it. And instead of making that 35th free throw, uh, he bricked it. He bricked it on purpose. And honestly, it was a close game. So I think about sometimes there are times when it might be really tricky to do both. Uh, maybe if there was one second left and they were down by one, I don't know if he would have made the same choice. Um, but what a really awesome thing to do. I think there's other examples of when those uh, can come a little bit into contradiction. Can you think of any for me? When your best yeah. player has done something that is not okay and yeah. you want to, you want to just keep them in the game because you're down and you're losing and you know that they can make things happen out there, yeah. but the right thing to do would be to bench them and you keep them in. <laughs> That's a, that's a great example. It's one of the hardest examples, but it happens more frequently than we want. And holding people accountable is really, really important. Thank you for that example. Uh, we're going to move along uh, to the next steps in the workshop. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice job. Ooh. Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> My hockey water bottle. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. All right. <laughs> Lay it how did on you feel going? How'd you feel going through that? You know, I felt okay. I've been practicing a bit, but I think I, I wish I had done it in front of somebody else first. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was honestly my first time doing it in front of somebody. But I felt okay. I, I know I've got some work to do in transitions, but it felt good to just get it out. That's I, I was I was honestly like when you just said transitions, one of the first things I put on there was great transitions. Oh. So. Oh. <laughs> sometimes sometimes we're harder on ourselves mm -hmm. than, we, yeah. than we realize. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, Kylie, since this is the first time you're getting to, to see Aaron go through this, I want you to put mm -hmm. yourself in the place of a coach that was in the room. What really connected with you about what she did? What did you really like about what she did? I think the first thing is energy. You have great energy and just talking in and engaging with myself. Um, I think also your relatability um, to being a mom, also a coach, an AD. I mean, just bringing that up into the conversation, I can relate to it. I mean, I'm not a mother yet, but if I was, I think I could immediately see that being um, something to connect what you're doing and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ruben, would you like to add? I, I will. And, and I know Kelly, Kelly gives such great feedback. I'm going to keep mine brief so that I can jump in the shower and head to the airport. But um, uh, Aaron, you have high standards for yourself, um, which is awesome, which is awesome. Um, I mean, uh, you really just bring so much to this. And I, I'm just so uh, happy that you're going to become a PCA trainer. So um, you, you, two, two highlights for me were I, the free throw story. Um, I saw that come across Facebook and I meant to come back and, and check out what happened, but I, I, I never did. So I'm glad that you, you shared that. I, I was very touched by the story. 
Um, I think it's really cool and it's, it's a current event and you know, your, your ability to bring it in. That, that's one thing, one of the many highlights for me personally. The other one was you were subtle about this, but I thought it was powerful when you said, you know, PCA combined psych, uh, sports psychology with best practices and that's in the room, you know, and, you know, as a participant, what a nice thing to hear that you respect mm -hmm. uh, my experience and my opinions and, um, and that I'm going to get to share, share that and learn from my peers in the room. So I, mm -hmm. those were two of the highlights for me. Thanks. Um, I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry that I'm going to run, but um, really enjoyed it. I'll see you guys. Okay. Thank you, Ruben. Thanks, thanks Ruben. Thanks, thanks, Kelly. Kylie, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Have a good one. Aaron, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to steal that um, free throw. <laughs> that is awesome. I didn't even mm -hmm. know that. And I'm definitely going to be sharing that out today with yeah. our partner. That's so cool. Yeah, it was it was really, really cool. And he's gotten to know the family. I mean, that's what was really touching yeah. more to the story. But yeah, re read on that. It's great. It is a good story. And I kept thinking, like, is he going to miss every free throw now for the rest? You know, like, if he ever gets close again, is he going to miss every one? <laughs> no, they actually, the, fa the family said, you better go for it and get it again. Like, Thanks for oh, doing it. But now we want you to have another opportunity. So it's cool. Oh, good, good. That was my first thought after the story. I'm like, oh, is he never going to get <laughs> I know, it? Like <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, Kylie, if there's one, um, you know, area of improvement, something that, yeah. that Erin could work on, what would be a suggestion that you would give her? I think really one thing that I've noticed just going to so many of these workshops is really making sure that you're utilizing the National Advisory Board. Um, they're such a great, I mean, tool. I mean, you don't have, you touched on it a little bit, but just yeah. really focusing on these people really believe in what we're doing and that credibility goes so far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, I, I've seen people's eyes light up more, honestly, mm -hmm. when, when you show that slide and you talk about um, those individuals, they immediately, I don't know what happens, but they switch um, into wanting to physically pay attention. And it's mostly the, the naysayers in the room um, than the people that are already engaged. Great. Yeah. Well, that's great, great feedback. Thank you. Yeah, I actually heard a trainer just the other day in a demo just like this. I loved what he said. He said um, he, he was talking about how coaches, you know, to all the coaches that I know this job for you as a volunteer soccer coach is not feeding your family. So, mm -hmm. of course, you know, you guys are probably going to buy into positivity because you want the best experience for yourself as well. But and then he showed the National Advisory Board and he said, these people are feeding their families. This is their career. <laughs> And they're mm -hmm. going to lose their yeah. job. So they want the best performance out of their athletes, bar none. And they believe that positivity is the best way to get performance. So mm -hmm. he said, you know, that was his kind of his tagline. And I was like, that's really good. That's a really yeah. good point that their career and their job and for some of them, their million dollar paycheck is hanging on performance and they're choosing positivity over when at all costs. Yeah. So, you know, that just was powerful for me. I was like, that's great. I'm going to steal that because I thought that was, I'm going to steal it and share it with 20 other people. So I thought that was really good. Yeah. But thanks, Kylie. Good point. Was there anything else that um, stuck out for you? I don't think so. Not, that's okay. the one thing I put down um, immediately. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, I have, um, I always say like whenever I do these, a lot of times I'm taking notes, um, you know, to give you feedback. And a lot of times I'm taking notes to steal things that you're saying. So <laughs> I ended up having, I ended up having a lot of notes, which I love. That's why I love doing this. Cause I get to see people do workshops all the time, but, um, right off the top, I agree your energy and your pace. I think were great. Um, you've seen me do a lot of videos. I'm a very fast talker. And I, the one thing it's a great tool to have because it keeps people on their toes. It keeps yeah. people's energy. Um, let me offer a suggestion too. When Please. you're a fast talker, high energy person, and you slow it down, you're going to get a huge impact. You're going to get the coaches to like lean in and go, whoa, wait a minute. She's mm -hmm. got another side too. Just as there's some people that are pretty flat <laughs> and I ask them to ramp it up. You know, you guys need to ramp it up. It's the same thing when you're a high energy person. And especially when you're telling a story or yeah. talking about a player or talking about experience you had, if you slow that down, pause, change the tone of your voice. That, that is such a huge emphasis for people. So that's a great, a great tool that you have in your pocket. Um, I also put down in my notes, I have my little codes here. I have my pluses, my, my little deltas, and then I have my LOL sign. 
Yeah. Um, and if I laugh out loud when you're doing a demo, that will engage me as well. And I have like five of them. In <laughs> so Good. to me, I mean, that's important right off the bat. Like I'm just picturing these little youth, you know, tantrums and I just start <laughs> laughing. I'm like, what a perfect name for a youth soccer team. Mm -hmm. Like of toddlers, literally the tantrums. Yeah. I think that's great. That just makes me laugh right there. But I think that's, you know, right off the top, somebody would look at your resume and go, wow, you know, this is pretty awesome. She's so high level. And then when you talk, when you want to make it relatable, you're coaching six-year-olds. Yeah. So, and, and I, I often say that too. I went from coaching at the college level to coaching six-year-olds literally in one year and, you know, send me back to college any day because uh -huh. they were easier to coach than six-year-olds, especially when you threw, and I liked when you threw in too, that your own child was so challenging because when you do these youth coach workshops, you're doing them for coaches, but they're all coaching their own kids. Yep. Every once in a while, you'll get an outlier that's some grandfather, but, you know, usually they are parents. And that is something that we don't address in, we, we address it in the parent workshop, but we don't really address it much in the coach workshop. And mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important to put in, and you can even ask for how many of you are coaching your own kids, yes. you know, ask for that right up front. You're going to get almost every coach in the room to raise mm -hmm. their hands. So, yep. you know, again, I, I consider you a triple threat where you are a high level athlete, high level coach, and still an athlete and a player. And as a PCA trainer, that is seriously like the Jennifer Lopez of PCA trainers <laughs> because no, really like somebody like Kylie, you, say, you are, man, you are because someone like Kylie can feel comfortable sending you into any level workshop. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've got a lot of awesome trainers that don't have that parental experience. And we've got a lot of trainers that, you know, maybe they were an athlete 30 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's something to saying, like, I'm still playing. <laughs> there's a reason that you're 38 years old and you're still playing sports. It's not just to get, well, maybe it's just to get you out of the house, but it's also, <laughs> that's why I still played adult sports to get me out of the house. Um, so anyway, I just, I thought that's, that's a really big asset for you. Um, I'm just going to go chronologically here. Just yeah. remember to mention for the who is PCA slide that those are annual numbers and oh, yeah. they actually, okay. Yeah. And they actually should be increased. Um, and yeah. we're going to talk about that um, very soon. We're going to have the slides revamped that have okay. the more current numbers because it's actually higher than that now. Yeah. Uh, what we find is when we have to change a slide to get 150 trainers to re-download that PowerPoint <laughs> and share it is like, you know, watching paint dry it takes a long time. Yeah. So, um, but we are going to update those numbers and up update those slides. Okay. Um, I loved all the questioning and I loved again that you didn't ask us to share out every single time mm -hmm. when you ask us a question, sometimes sharing with a partner is good enough, but what I'm going to ask you to do is sometimes having coaches share an experience. So if they're talking about like, you know, what makes a great experience for kids or give me some life lessons. Like, I don't think, I mean, those were good to shout out around the room. Those were of course good. But mm -hmm. sometimes if you said, I'm trying to think of a, a question that you asked us and I wrote, um, I wrote, ask us to, you know, share it, share it out. What did I say? Da, 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 da. I forget which one you did. I'll have to go back and look. Um, oh, like the, the, like, what will players say about you? You know, that's oh, a personal yeah. one. That's okay, a personal good. one. I don't think you have to have people share, but when you're talking about, you know, think of a great sports experience or think about a coach, any type of a connecting part of the workshop where you've got a coach thinking about my own experience, the players I coach, the, a really good reason to share that out loud after they share with a partner is so that it's relatability. Everybody's like, oh man, I've been there. I got that, you know? And then you can get a lot of heads nodding and like, who's with them on that? Or I'll ask a lot of times, what's your biggest challenge? Write down your biggest, um, in the front of the book, I'll have them write down, why do you coach? What, what, why does coaching bring you joy? Or something yeah. like that and say, what's your greatest challenge? You know, those are two questions right off the bat. Yeah. And if you can get people to share out their biggest challenges, then you get everybody else in the room to go up. Oh, you got it. You're right. I'm right with you. That's, that's yeah. big for me too. And sometimes I'll just say, okay, clap twice if you agree. So I'm going to have a couple people share out like my biggest challenge is parents, anybody and clap twice to agree, Got it. you know, so just makes it interactive and a good way yeah. to get them thinking. Um, I liked that, you know, I can tell you did your homework. You were really well prepared. I liked it when you know what slides coming next and you have a transition before the slide shows up. I mean, that's such a, that's such an important thing. And that really shows that you did your homework and it's much smoother. You were very smooth in your, in your transitions from one to the next slide. And I thought, I thought that was great. Um, I like when you talked about, I, I think I already said this, but I like the way you brought up that it's so challenging anytime because the coaches are going to be in the room thinking that you're the perfect coach yeah. and that you've always done everything right. So anytime you as a PCA trainer can share times that you've messed up mm -hmm. things you would have done differently, 
Um, I say all the time, like the very first kids I ever coached are now in their thirties. And I feel like seriously, like giving them a gift card for therapy because all the things that I did that I thought were such good coaching now, I hope I didn't screw them up forever. Um, so, you know, and then there's other kids that have invited me to their weddings. So I'm yeah. realizing like, wow, I've, I've made an impact on some and others I probably really messed up. But, you know, you just see everybody in the room kind of like relax, like, okay, you know, she's being real here. We've all made mistakes. So then they're more open to share their mistakes and share their challenges. Um, the Herm Edwards, you know, anytime you have any updated information, especially local, anytime you can get a local story from Seattle, from any, any area, you know, coaches love that. That's a very cool thing. Also, and I, and I know you'll probably do this, but I always research into the organization too. Um, go on their website, check out how their records are. Um, especially when you do high school athlete workshops, I'm doing one tomorrow and the wrestling team from this high school just won the state championship. Wait, and what, I'm really sorry. Hang on. No, one go, second. go ahead. Hey, what happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> oh, no. I've done so many of these with like toddlers sitting on laps of people. I love it. Oh, that's funny. And then there's Dan James that always had like his cat sitting in his lap. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a screamer. <laughs> Is she okay? She's fine. She's fine. She couldn't get her shirt off. <laughs> oh. I was gonna say I've, I've like, done many stuck. of these. She's I've done many of a... these with like toddlers sitting on people's laps, so it's okay. Yeah, no. I, was I, had one, I had one woman from Hawaii who did the entire demo with a six-month-old in her arms. I'm like, you are awesome. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. So, sorry, I sorry, I interrupted. No, no, no. Please, it's totally fine. Um, yeah. So again, I just, I just think you, you know, you can, you're only going to get better. You're only going to get smoother. Um, you did a nice job bringing in your personal stories. That's where the connection is going to be. That's where the coaches are going to remember it. So yeah. when you get into the tools, um, the, the actual principles for your next demo, remember there's theory, there's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the scenario that brings the theory into practice and then the tools they're going to go home with. So in that place, always make sure that you have some coach in the room, you know, sharing something from their yeah. end somehow and then you giving a personal story and it doesn't have to be your own story as you said you know the jordan bohannon story is great yeah. but um the tools are what we want to make come alive for these coaches so that they can walk out of the workshop and say wow i've got so many awesome ideas of things i can put into practice yeah. um the tools at the end of each principle shouldn't just be like a bulleted list like oh yeah and here's some ideas for you like we don't want them to be ideas we want them to be like this is what you can do differently that mm -hmm. will you know change literally change the way your practice goes yeah. So um, I'm excited to see what you do with the next principles. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. absolutely. And I'm sure Kylie is too. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm so glad you were on the call, Kylie. I really appreciate you and your time. And yeah, I no, this is great. I'm down and see you because I'm sure you're a little lonely in there. <laughs> yeah, I am. As you can see my light shuts off every once in a while because no one's seen <laughs> and, and moving I'm enough here. in here. Oh, Are you in an actual office out there? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, we're, cool. I don't know if you've ever been to Seattle.